Hey gang, Starving Photographer here, and today I'm going to show you how quickly you can convert an image on the left to one that's more vibrant and colorful and dynamic like the image on the right using just a few quick tools in Lightroom. I considered this a beginner to a intermediate level video, but everybody may benefit from it because there may be some knowledge gaps and it never hurts to review some processes. Okay. Here's an image that I have created a virtual copy of. You can tell this is the virtual copy because of the little icon over here. And I'm going to edit one of these images and use the other image as a before and after comparison. So let's take a look at this image here. I'm going to double click on it. I'll show you some parameters. You can see this is actually a JPEG image uh, taken on a Sony a7 III with a Sony 24-70 f4 lens. But let me show you what I'm talking about as far as the tools I'm using. And there are basically, I'm going to go to the develop module, there are basically three things I want to go over. One is this highlight slider over here and I'm going to show you what the difference between this highlight slider is and this highlight slider up here. Okay, so they actually affect the images differently. Tool number two is the gradient filter and tool number three is the one just next to it called the radial filter. Let's first talk about the highlight filter. I'm going to show you what this highlight slider does to the overall image. It's basically an overall increase of your brightness in the highlight areas. And I'm going to, I'm going to slide it all the way to the right to give you an idea. See, it makes pretty much most of the sky very, very bright. Uh, and even some of the areas in the water, they make it very, very bright yet it sort of washes out some of the color. You lose the brilliance. So I'm going to reset that back to zero and you can do that just by double clicking on it. And then I'm going to go to the highlight slider over here on the curves. So this highlight slider is sort of exclusively affecting the brightest portions and adding it a little bit of more punch and a little bit more pizzazz if you will. So I'm going to increase that highlight slider and you can see just this portion of the sky was preferentially being affected. Okay, I'm going to go back set it to zero, and then turn it all the way to 100. And you see the difference? I think you can see the difference here. So how much you slide that over depends on personal taste, but because we had so much lee room here on the right-hand side of our exposure curve, I'm gonna leave it at 100% uh, to offer as much brilliance as possible uh, in that area of bright sky. In fact, uh, I'm gonna maybe expose the image to the right just a little bit and just to bring out the brightness overall. So exposure, you know, a very tiny amount, uh, 0.15. Next, I want to affect the sky preferentially over the water because I want to bring out more color over here and bring out more brilliance over here and maybe change the temperature uh, and dehaze it a little bit because the further out you go into the image, the more atmosphere and haze affects the image. So I'm going to do that by using this tool which is the gradient filter. I'm going to click that and then I want to make sure everything here is zeroed out to begin with. It may not be. You may have certain values like this, elsewhere like this. Uh, and if you want to quickly zero out these values, just double click on the effects text and everything gets zeroed out. And I like to do this uh, and plan out what I need to do. So I'm going to create a gradient filter from maybe this portion of the sky. If I hold the shift key down, it creates a straight edge. I'm going to come a little bit into the water so there's a nice transition zone. And at this point, you see no changes have happened. If you hover over this uh, circle, it tells you exactly the area that's going to be affected. It tells me that everything above the very top line is being affected 100%. The 100% of the filter is being applied above this top line. And the distance between the top line and the bottom line is where there's a gradual change in the effect of that filter such that it's maximum here and gradually decreases to 0% over here. And the wider you make these distances, the more gradual the process. So it's something you have to play around with, but this is sort of what I'm happy with. I think at this point, and I can always change that later on if I'm not completely happy with it. So at this point, I know what I want to do. I want to dehaze it. And dehazing, it just doesn't clarify the image a little bit. It actually adds a little bit of blue. So if it changes your white balance, you may want to be careful with that. But I actually like the effect it has. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to increase the hazing. So you see the sky became a little bit bluer 
and some of the pinks came out a little more. I kind of like that feature. I'm going to make it just a little brighter because again, we have so much room available, maybe 0.3 and I'm expecting just the sky. I'm going to increase the saturation because I want to bring out some of that uh, pink in the sky. And then as a final step, I like to mess with the temperature. I want it slightly warmer and I want a slightly more purple in there. And so I think the colors are more vibrant now, obviously, but without being over the top or unnatural, okay? So that's the second thing I wanted to talk about in this Lightroom tutorial. Finally, I want to affect just this area of the water, the area that has a little bit of pink color, the area that has a little bit of warmth, a little bit of brightness, without affecting so much of the darker areas over here and even over here because I think this is the area that's most interesting and I actually like the darker look of this area uh, because it has a natural frame to it. So for that, I use this tool called the uh, radial filter tool. I'm going to click on it and again, if everything isn't zeroed out, just double click the effects and it will ze get zeroed out. Uh, and one last thing is make sure you have this invert selected. If you don't have that selected, the effect is going to be actually outside of your ellipse. And you can leave the feather value at 50, that's okay. Remember, we can always play around with these values after the fact because everything is being done non-destructively and non-permanently, if you will. So I'm going to make an ellipse that surrounds basically this area here. And I'm gonna just do this by clicking and dragging. And don't worry about getting it exact because you can move it like so. And I'm going to make it a little narrower. And actually, I'm going to change the shape of it or the or orientation of it such that this is being affected. And I want to affect sort of preferentially the left side because this is where it's brightest. Okay, so now let's go ahead and apply some of these tools. I like, again, the dehaze to bring out a little bit of clarity. Uh, and, and, and the saturation, I'm going to increase the saturation just a tad and maybe increase the temperature, make it a little warmer, bring, bring out to reflect some of that warmness in the sky. Again, change a little bit of the purpleness and then just increase the exposure a tad to make it a little brighter, not so much that it looks obviously affected. And at this point, I'm, I like what it, what it looks like and I'm going to mess around with this curve a little bit just to see how it how it changes things as we as we make it bigger or smaller. I'm not seeing a whole lot of difference, so I'm gonna keep it that way and maybe something like this. Yeah, so that's actually pretty good. And again, I when I when I hover over that center dot, it tells me the area that's being affected. And if you notice, there's a little halo at the periphery, and that means there's a that's where the feathering came in. So the bigger the feathering number, the bigger this feathering number, the easier, the more gradual the transition. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click this again, and here we go. In a very few easy steps, we've gone from an image that looks like this to an image that looks like this. Again, using a few simple tools, and the tools that we utilized as a review was the highlight slider under the tone curves, not the highlight slider here uh, under the basics curve, because this basics highlight effects a wider range of highlights than does the highlights curve here. Really try to give the slider a go the next time you want to change your highlights as opposed to doing it uh, through this slider. And then we went on to affect just the sky using the gradient tool. And then finally, we affected just a elliptical portion of the water using this tool over here, the radial filter tool. Okay, I hope you've liked this video and if you do like it, be sure to click that subscribe button and give it a thumbs up. Thanks so much.